Hi there. I want you to know that God cares about the oppressed. The scriptures never invalidate or minimize the effect someone's harsh actions or cruel words have on another person's soul, spirit, and body. Just a simple reading through scripture illustrates God's disdain for mockers, abusers, deceivers, and those who misuse their power, oppressors, revilers, ragers, hypocrites, and slanderers. For example, the psalmist says, your tongue cuts like a sharp razor. You're an expert at telling lies. You love evil more than good and you lie, love lies more than truth. You love to destroy others with your words, you liar. David cries out to God, please listen and answer to me for I'm overwhelmed by my troubles. My heart pounds in my chest and the terror of death assaults me. Fear and trembling overwhelm me and I can't stop shaking. He's having an anxiety attack. He goes on to say, it's not an enemy who taunts me. I could bear that. It's not my foes who so arrogantly insult me. I could have hidden from that instead. It's you, my equal, my companion, my close friend. Sadly, I think as Christians, we've failed to validate the destructive consequences of living with a foolish, argumentative, angry, deceitful, contentious, indifferent, hard-hearted, or evil person when the scriptures are quite clear. The effects are real. The psalmist says in Psalm 69, 20, their insults have broken my heart and I am in despair. I wonder as Christians if sometimes we haven't valued honesty as much as we preach it. When a woman or man goes to their church leadership and discloses what's going on at home, he or she hopes to be supported and validated. For some, for some individuals, that's just not been their experience. Instead, he's been scolded and shamed or shunned, or she's been told, you gotta bring your husband in for his side of the story. Don't gossip about him. But how can a person speak honestly with a spouse present if they're afraid of what's gonna happen when they get home? She's been told she needs to be more submissive, try harder to make things work. He's been told that there's nothing in the Bible called emotional abuse, and therefore what he's experiencing has no validity. Abused individuals have been told that God somehow wants them to figure out how to make their marriage work because God hates divorce so much. But by our words and actions, are we telling the abused person that we don't want to get involved? We don't want to help? Do we inadvertently encourage the victim to just shut up, keep quiet, placate and pretend? And if he or she refuses and gets persistent or demanding in their plea for help, do we start to label them as aggressive, contentious, rebellious, unsubmissive, deceitful, or even unstable? I think sometimes as believers in the church, we're afraid to get involved because if we really open our eyes honestly to what's going on in some Christian homes, we don't know what to do. And we've valued the sanctity of marriage over the safety and the sanity of the people in it. Therefore, we've encouraged women and some men to just put up with abusive behavior rather than speak up or stand up and have our biblical categories challenged. Yet Jesus commended the persistent widow in Luke 18, who kept pestering the judge for legal protection against the injustice she was experiencing. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said to the churches who were silent when Adolf Hitler began abusing the Jews, silence in the face of evil is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak and not to act is to act. As a church, we can't be silent anymore when we see abuse. If this was helpful, please share it with a friend and maybe even your pastor. Take care and God bless.